part two of an overview of TPE 3.0 for iOS. I have the app running again on an iPhone 6. Um, and let's jump in. We're going to look at a couple of things uh, today, primarily geodetics and visual search. And we'll talk a little bit about the shadow and elevation tools as well. So one of the first skills you'll need for this tutorial is knowing how to move the map pins. Um, I showed you in the first part how you can you can recenter with the, the recenter button like so or by tapping the, the crosshairs. And that's great certainly for the red pin, but for the, the gray pin, which we're going to be dealing with shortly, uh, you need a different technique. Um, so to move the pin, uh, I press my finger halfway up, the map moves, now I can move the pin and I can release. So push halfway up, map moves, move the pin, release. It's as simple as that. The only difference is if you're using Apple Maps, which is um, available in settings, then you'll need to tap the pin once first to select it. And once it's selected, you can do exactly as I've shown you. The animation will look a little bit different when, when you do that. So we're going to look at an example here. We're going to go to a little area north of Boulder here in Colorado called Lagerman Reservoir. There it is. I'm going to put the pin just there on that corner. And uh, that's because there's a little uh, pier that comes out from the north side of the reservoir. You can walk out on that. It's pretty steady, so you can actually take some nice photographs across the water looking out west to the Rockies. Uh, you can see there's the plains to the east and the mountains to the west here. And uh, it's quite a nice shot at sunset, particularly if there's some, some clouds over the, over the foothills. Um, so let's jump in. One of the tools we're going to use today is geodetics, and that is accessed by pressing the gray pin button. When you first use the tool, the pin will drop in due east of the center of the map, as you've seen right there. That's not, in fact, where we want it. Um, so let me just put it roughly where we're going to need it. So tap in the middle, drag it over here. I'm going somewhere here. I'm going to adjust it again. And I'm going to move out here. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to rotate the map like this because it lets us actually see a little bit more. And it's, we can imagine that the, the device is pointing in the direction of the shot. And I can tilt the map and that foreshortens things a little bit. So I'm looking sort of southwest here. Um, and let's imagine that I'm going to put, I want to shoot in this direction. And you can see that I've just dragged the pin over uh, Patchy Peak, which is one of the higher peaks there. And I've done that for a reason. So if you know this area at all, you'll know that the Continental Divide, which is the, the divide where the water runs either into the Pacific or into the Atlantic or the Gulf, essentially runs down the spine of the, the Rockies in, in this part of the U.S. And... Uh, that tends to be the highest point in, in the peak. So what I've done here is I've put the gray pin just beyond what I know to be the highest point. And I did that for a reason, which you can see down below here. The chart is um, showing you essentially a plot of the, the topographical profile along the line from the red pin to the gray pin. And in this mode, you can see on the left hand Y axis, it's measured in degrees. So that is degrees of altitude so it's essentially what angle would you need to look up to or down to um, at each point along along this line and the parts of the line that are solid are things that you can see from where you're standing at the red pin position if it's dotted then you can't see it because it's blocked by intervening terrain now this particular mode on the chart which is the altitude profile essentially it gives you a sense of the perspective of the scene. So, as you know, even though Apache Peak is by far the highest point, um, certainly compared with the, the foothills and the plains, um, it's only just the highest point in terms of how it appears to the, the observer at the red pin. And that's because things disappear um, with perspective and distance. If you want to look at the true elevation profile, you can double tap. I'll do it again. There we go. There's the elevation profile. Um, and by default, this is scaled so that the a, a unit of distance on the y-axis is the same as the x-axis, which is why it looks a little bit squashed. If I tap once, it'll scale it up. Um, and there you can see very clearly that Apache Peak is the highest. But again, the line of visibility shows you what you can see and what you can't see. So I'll pop back to the altitude profile there. So it's a double tap to cycle between the chart modes, like that. There we go. So... I'm going to go to the uh, sun-moon chart, and now I'll show you 
I can cycle back and you can see at this time of year the sun is already setting to the south so I would need to be later in spring in order to have the sun setting in that far north. So let's move ahead, let's try a month. Yeah, and you see the sun has moved a long way further north. And now if I adjust the time of day, I can get the line of the sun at 6.01 on the 16th of March. It's in line with the red to grow pin as we happen to have positioned it. Double tap. And you can see very clearly there that the sun is well above the, the mountains at that point. So this wouldn't be the right time to catch the sun dropping behind the mountains at this time of year. Double tap again, there's the altitude profile. And because that's a measurement in degrees, you can see that the sun is represented as a straight line there rather than the, the angled line as you'd, you'd experience it in, in, in real life. So, what to do? Well, we could manually try adjusting the date. If I go, let's say I'll go back a little bit. And you see the sun is setting. So now let me adjust the time back to roughly where we want to be and there we go okay and okay we're much closer now but you can see there'd be quite a lot of trial and error involved in this approach um, but there's a better way we can use the visual search tool to basically get a list of dates when the sun will be exactly over that peak so let's do that first thing to note before we go into the search tool a couple of key pieces of information First thing is that the distance from red to grey pin, 27 miles, okay, we don't actually need that. B for bearing, 258 degrees from true north, as I have the app set at the moment. An elevation distance of 4,500, uh, difference, not distance, an elevation difference of 4,500 feet roughly. And a change in altitude of 3.1 degrees from the red pin to the highest point along the path. So... What we can do with that is switch to visual search and the first thing to note is we can search for either the sun or the moon. We can search for where it's rising or setting or we can search for a specific azimuth and altitude and that's the mode that we want for this because the sun isn't setting at that point. It's not below the horizon. It's just dropped below or it will drop below a peak um, which is an obstruction to the true horizon. So. The app automatically picks up the altitude and the azimuth from the geodetics information that we just looked at. And what we can do is, I'm going to change the date here to move it back so you get the idea of how it would be from here we are in February, for example. And let's search over the next one year for when the sun will be at a target altitude of 3.1 degrees, 258 degrees azimuth, with a tolerance of 2 degrees, and that's the tolerance on the azimuth as it's set up. I'll show you that a little bit more later. Perform the search. Boom. There we are. 16 results in the next year. All of these are valid results. The ones that have the green asterisk are ones that are a very, very close match to the input parameters. So I think within about a quarter of degrees is the tolerance it looks at for that. So let's look at one of those. Sunday the 1st of March. And there it is. The sun is sitting directly at the peak uh, or the highest point on, on the profile. Imagine that we wanted it to sit just above that. So I'm now going to go to advanced mode and rather than the middle of the disk being at the peak I want the peak or the sun sat on top of the peak so I can align the disk to be sit on top of rather than sit in the middle of if, you, if that makes sense. Run that again and you see the date move to a day later, the 2nd of March is when it's just just that way. So you can use that you know, for, to fine tune some of these things. Um, a couple of other things let's try. I haven't tried this before so I have no idea what's going to happen. But let's look at the moon options. Let's say we wanted say a full moon and we would like it let's say at best time. Now best time corresponds to when the Sun is between plus or minus 2 degrees. So that's really at the time when you're going to get very last of, of the best light or just into the, the earth shadow phase where the moon sits, sits very nicely. So let's see if that's achievable. It may well not be, but we can try. So I have full moon, best, 
azimuth altitude. Let's do a longer search, five years, perform search. There we go. There are in fact two results. So let's go to that one. And there it is. It's a little bit off in the on the azimuth, as you can see. It's just to the to the north, but it's it's pretty close, and it sits right there. And if I just temporarily disable geodetics, we can see that at 6:38, it's just after sunrise. Um, the sun is only 1.3 degrees above the horizon, and it's as you'd expect, of course, a little bit before moonset. So that could be interesting. But this gives you an idea of, of some of the things that you can search for with this tool. The only other thing to say here, I think, for now is that altitude or azimuth priority, that really is up to you. It depends on what's most important for your shot. If the altitude of the sun or the moon above an object is more critical than its lateral position, then choose altitude. If the azimuth is is required, so for example, you, you can't move your shooting location and you need the let's say the moon directly on top of a building, then azimuth should be the priority. A couple of final points on visual search. I didn't say much about tolerance, but the way tolerance works is if you're doing an azimuth altitude search and you have altitude priority, then the tolerance is applied to the azimuth. So the app will go find things that match very closely on the altitude. It'll then check the azimuth and accept the results that are within the tolerance. If you have azimuth priority, it matches on azimuth first and then accepts or discards based on the tolerance in, in altitude. And then finally, I didn't talk about phase. Generally speaking, for a full moon, people aren't so concerned about whether it is waxing or waning. Although typically, if you want a shot of the full moon in the evening, it's going to rise to the east. Yes, the east. Um, and will be waxing. If you want the full moon setting in the morning, it's typically going to be after full moon and therefore waning. Uh, for a new moon, you need to select specifically crescent waxing. And for many people, the new moon has a certain cultural significance, so it's important to be able to distinguish between a crescent moon that is waxing or waning, which is, which is why we have the options. Well, that was quite a lot of material to get through both geodetics and visual search. So I will cover the shadows and the elevation adjustments in a part three that I'll try to get recorded in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.